Hey, what's up everybody? This is Browncoat67 coming at you from Minecraft where today we are going to start building a castle. Now, this beautiful, beautiful seed might look familiar to you. I had this previewed in another video. It was the top 10 best seeds for 1.18. I will have the seed flashing on the screen right now. And I will also have the video available for you to click on right up here. Click the card if you want to check that video out and see what other seeds we have. But I'm going to be building my castle here. As you can see, we have a village over here and a village over here. So I'm going to have a couple active villages right nearby. I'll be able to start and maintain a large community. And I think I'm going to build my castle right here, kind of around this waterfall. I'm thinking of having maybe like the gatehouse right here. And then having the walls for the first layer, because I do plan on building like a two-layered city castle. Uh, and I think I'm going to have that gatehouse starting right here, which will be what we do today. I'm going to go ahead and kind of create a little bit of an outline on the ground to start. If you want to copy what I'm doing, you can go ahead. Um, I definitely suggest just kind of do your own thing and let's build this together, you know. All right, first things first, I need to decide what I want to build my castle out of. Now, I'm definitely going with some kind of brick. Uh, I'm a very, you know, fond fan of the traditional stone brick look, but the deep slate bricks have a little bit of a darker vibe to them, a little bit older feeling. I think I'm actually going to play with that today. We may also throw some black stone bricks in there just to have those two dark colors contrasting with each other. All right, so I'm going to begin with the main entryway. I'm going to have it three blocks wide, and I'm probably going to... Four, five, six, seven... Probably, what, eight deep, I think? All right. All right, so that will be the main hallway here for the gatehouse. I'm definitely... Definitely thinking I might do like a moat around it too and have kind of a drawbridge and I'll go over that with you and we can actually make that work with uh, some command blocks too. That'll be pretty fun. Right, and I think I'm going to take that eight out in either direction here. Make a big uh, gatehouse. It's very easily defended. Alright, so I went ahead and laid down the foundation, uh, the main hallway, which was three blocks. I took it out eight from either way, and it also ran eight blocks back. So you should have 19 blocks across and eight blocks uh, wide. Now I switched back over to that deep slate and I'm using the deep slate bricks. I'm going to use those for the exterior walls and I've got the black stone down for the bricks on the floor right now. Both of those dark brick patterns I think are really going to work well together. Now on the sides of this main hall, I think I'm going to have a fun little area where archers could shoot intruders from the side. So we're going to put these walls up. Kind of like what we would do with an XP farm, where you have like a, a, a one-slotted window. Just like this. So as people, if they were trying to break in, uh, like an army that was trying to, you know, invade, as they would come into the gatehouse, if they managed to get across the bridge, you could have archers and defenders lined up in here to stop them from getting to a secondary door, a secondary gate. So I went through and I put some walls up now. I'm going to uh, section off those rooms right there for the defenders to try and, and fight off the invaders. And then I'll probably put like barracks areas here for them to sleep in on the lower floor. And the upper floor I might have some kind of like living quarters for the, uh, the guards and soldiers. Uh, obviously there'll be some uh, uh, defense up here as well for the gates. And of course, I'm going to add in the uh, commands for the actual working drawbridge here, and we'll start working on our moat here in the front. 
what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up these walls on the bottom floor. I'm going to take them all up. Probably, I'm going to want the front door to be at least probably four blocks tall. So I think I'm going to take them all up to five blocks like, like this. That way I'll be able to have a pretty big drawbridge that will open and close across the moat. And then we can start on the second floor. And then for the second floor, I think I'm going to go with dark oak planks. I'm going to switch over to wood uh, for the floors now. All right, so I got the rest of the holes filled in with the uh, dark oak planks now. Uh, definitely starting to come together. All right, so now kind of coming out above the uh, drawbridge here is going to be a little uh, section of building. Got myself some deep slate brick slabs here. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing this out. like so. So now the defenders above uh, on the second floor here will have a safe place from a majority of the army when to build these walls up here uh, where they can actually focus on people coming in towards the door with uh, battering rams or anything like that. And now I'm going to kind of seal it up with the slabs again on the top. That way it's tall enough where people can come in but it also looks very uh, uniform from the front side I like having the uh, stairs kind of protruding out from the wall uh, giving it some reinforced shape put some windows in the front here. I'm going to start that off just one brick away. I'm going to shape it just like that. Those will have glass in them, um, but this is going to be uh, a majority of the building already. We'll go ahead and start putting the roof on. I'm going to stick with the uh, deep slate brick for the roof. I'm going to add some uh, crenelled battlements to the top side here. Uh, try to give it that classic medieval look. All right, and then those windows, as I mentioned, we're going to use glass. I'm going with like a stained glass type pattern there. And we're going to start working on the moat. So we're going to dig a little bit. That's going to be good. Now, in an, a later episode, we will definitely uh, work on the moat further and we'll get it filled in. I don't know if I want to do water. We might look at lava. Lava's not very accurate, but it is cool. We'll probably just do water. Maybe we'll put some axolotls in there too to help fend off any uh, hostile mobs. It is a big bee. 
That was a UFO flying around up there. All right, so to get the drawbridge working, we're going to do the give commands. We're going to give us the old command block. Ta-da! We're also going to want to grab a uh, lever, some redstone dust, and a redstone torch. All right, so after you have your command block, your lever, a redstone dust, and your redstone torch, we're going to go ahead and come back here, and I'm going to break this block right next to the main gate, but I'm on the inside, not the outside of the gatehouse here. I'm going to put a brick down, and then I'm going to put a lever here. This is what's going to open and close the uh, drawbridge. All right, so I cleared out the ground below it, and I put a command block here, and I'm running redstone dust from on top of the command block down, so it wants to drop down a block, and then we're gonna raise back up one block and have a redstone torch on it. Then right next to that's another command block with some redstone dust on top. So what this is, this is a switch. This is going to let us switch between a couple different things, and uh, we're gonna add a couple more command blocks as well, but I just wanted to show you that first. This is, like I said, this is going to be a switch that is going to let us open and close the drawbridge. And we are only going to be using fill commands. So first things first, I'm going to come over here and I am going to press F3 and a bunch of holy crap information is going to pop up all over the screen. Uh, one of the things that I want to show is actually over here off to the side of the advancements is your XYZ. Those are your coordinates. You're going to need to get those for a few different positions. So the first set of coordinates we're going to want is going to be one of the bottom squares of the front of the gatehouse where the door is. Okay, so we're going to come down. It doesn't matter which side. I'm going to drop down right here onto this one. And I'm going to hit F3, like I said, to pull up that information. So now the coordinates I'm writing down are that is that X, Y, and Z value. Um, now right below that where it says block, those are the exact squared coordinates. So you're going to want to grab those. So it's going to be 62. 93 and that's going to be negative 119. I'm writing these down. Make sure you use your coordinates, not mine. And then we're going to pop up here and we're going to fly up to this corner, which is the other corner. Um, the only thing is we're going to add one more to the Y value because it's grabbing the spot where your feet are. So it's going to be 62 and we're going to do 96 and then it's going to be negative 117. So these coordinates here are for the door. Hold on, let me turn this rain off here. Stop it! I love Java Edition and the ability to use these awesome shaders, but man, does it rain so much more than in Bedrock Edition. So now, very similarly, I'm gonna grab this coordinate here for this corner of the uh, where the bridge is gonna be. And then I'm also going to come over to here and grab this coordinate. Make sure that uh, if you're down on the ground like this, I would add one because I want to grab this block, not down here. Okay, so you can try to position your feet there like this. And uh, that way your coordinates will better match it as well. But either way, just make sure that you're grabbing these ones here. So like for if I were to go all the way down, I know that's 91. So I do need to be on 92. So this first one for me is 58. 92 and that's going to be negative 117 now if I were to come over here and stand in front of this one so it's going to be 61 and that's also going to be 92 and just like before that's going to be a negative 119 because these are the uh, same Z values that we had used for the door alright so now that I have all of that we can start working on our fill command Alright, so for the one that is naturally on, I want to have the door open, I think. So this side here, I'm going to come over, and in the first one, I'm going to put in my fill command, and I'm going to start doing the coordinates for the uh, bridge area above the moat. And for this one is 58, 92, negative 117, and then I'm going to go to 61, 92, negative 119 and this one here I want to replace with dark oak planks and I'm going to replace which means that none of the tiles are gonna get dropped when it switches 
And now to this one, I'm going to do the similar thing. It's going to be a fill command, but I'm going to use the coordinates that I got for the door. So that'd be 62, 93, negative 119 to uh, 62, 96, negative 117. And I'm replacing this with air. That's also going to be replace. So now with this, it puts the bridge down across the uh, moat. Now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna basically reverse those, the exact same commands, only I'm gonna switch which one is air and I'm going to switch which one is the dark oak planks. So we'll start off with the fill and we're gonna go back to 58, 92, negative 117, 61, 92, negative 119. These are the coordinates that go over the moat. And now I'm going to replace that with air. I'm going to come over to the next one, fill, and I'm going to do 62, 93, negative 119, 62, 96, negative 117. And this one is the dark oak planks and replace. So now just like that, I have a switch that opens and closes. And when it's closed, there is nothing to cross the moat, nothing at all. It is completely sealed off. There's no ledge for anybody to try and jump to or anything like that. It is super awesome if you want to make an actual defensive uh, drawbridge. So now we're going to go ahead and cover this back up with dirt and it is perfectly seamless now I could replace this here with a daylight sensor and this would automatically open and close as the Sun came up and set uh, but for today I think we're just going to go ahead and leave this uh, now you'll notice that it's popping up saying that I filled those blocks so let's go ahead and do game rule this is gonna be right into your chat bar command block output and make sure you have those capitals and we're gonna put false this is going to make it so that when those command blocks activate and deactivate, it's not going to keep popping up that it's filling those. So now you have a seamless drawbridge that opens and closes quickly. Now that I got the drawbridge working, I went ahead and put some stairs on the inside of the gatehouse that would take you up to the second floor. Uh, for me, with these kind of builds, I try to have stairs that are on the outside of the buildings, but still on the inside of the castle as much as possible. Uh, like in, if you've ever watched The Lord of the Rings, The Battle of Helm's Deep, you'll notice a lot of stairs on the inside of the wall, on the inside of the keep, uh, that are built not to interfere with the space inside the rooms, but on the outside of the rooms. That way you can still maximize on your space. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of start decorating the inside of this. The uh, gatehouse here is pretty much completed. Um, I'm going to add some decorations, show you around a little bit. And in the next episode, we're going to start adding the crenel battlements on the outside wall of the lower bailey or the lower city section. So we're going to add our walls around and add our battlements to them. Uh, so that'll be pretty fun. We'll start to shape our city. So I'm definitely thinking I'm probably going to have some torches, maybe some lanterns. I like having chains.
All right, so I have finished decorating. Let's set this to nighttime and uh, see how we look at the night. Oh yeah, looking pretty good. I like it. Right away you notice the dispensers on top. This is a ballista that I've made out of redstone. Uh, it's a triple ballista actually, which is like a massive crossbow. So when you hit this lever, all three of these dispensers are going to fire arrows down. Uh, these are like pinnacle uh, type defense and siege technology from the medieval time period. You see a lot of ballistas, trebuchets, catapults, things like that. So I'm definitely gonna try to put some of those into the build. Now, if you're the invading army and you're coming in, you're going to feel slightly uncomfortable with all the chains that I've hung up. I figured they looked pretty cool, and this is what I would call the uh, the kill zone. As uh, any kind of invading army tries to get in, there would be a lot of defenses in here. If, if somehow you manage to get over this gate, which retracts, and you survive the onslaught of defenders from the roof and from the portal above, you get into here, and I'm going to create a secondary gate here. Um, where you will basically have to get through the next door while getting shot at from defenders. Now, if you were to go check out the inside, you have the defense rooms, which are very plain and dark. I don't want those lit, uh, because if it is nighttime and the attackers are coming in, they, you don't want them to see where you are, but you want to see where they are. So you don't light behind you or where you are, you light up where they are. And then coming over here, this is one of the rooms where the uh, soldiers, guards here will sleep. I've got the exact same setup over here on the other side. And then we can head upstairs to find some more of the uh, guard and soldier areas. We've got a table with some chairs, uh, some more beds set up, uh, some books, got some barrels. So this is definitely where the, the, the soldiers of the gatehouse will live and spend all their time. Uh, that way, if there is any kind of invasion, they are able to defend the gates. Let me know what you think of my first part of this uh, series. I think it's going to be probably about 10 episodes long. I was trying to plan it out a little bit. Uh, so this one here is the gatehouse. And again, in the next one, if you want to follow along, we're going to start working on the battlements and the walls. They're going to be crenelled. And that's going to surround the, uh, the lower portion of the city. You can go ahead and click on that video here. If it's not here, that means it's not posted yet. Go ahead and click on subscribe so that you don't miss out when I do post it.